Hello, what's this face? Welcome back to a new video. Tygon here, and in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get your perfect Apex Legends mobile aimbot sense in three steps. So with that said, let's get into it. Over the past few months, lots of people have been asking me how do I have such good aim, even in the beta and the soft launch. And with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you some of the best ways you can go ahead and find your own perfect sensitivity because as I said, I can't just go ahead and give you my sensitivity. I mean, I could, but it's not gonna go ahead and work for you because my tablet is a different size, I play differently, and a whole bunch of other factors are there. But if you do wanna see that, there you go. Now, before we begin, there are lots of different sensitivities that you can choose to play. You can choose to play gyroscope, fixed speed, or speed acceleration. I, however, play speed excel. This same step and technique can work for fixed speed, so follow along, but I just personally feel that speed acceleration gives you more freedom and especially is good on phone because it restricts you less. So I have the base speed acceleration sensitivity on right here. It's on medium. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. The first two things you're gonna need is an R99 and a wingman. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So what you wanna go ahead and do is find your base sensitivity. And within that, there are two senses. There is your iron sight sense and your look around slash hip fire sense. Now I usually leave my look around and hip fire sense the exact same because I feel like it's just gonna allow you to be faster. But there are a few senses that I do not have the aim and firing speeds linked. So keep that in mind. So first off, we need to go ahead and be able to hit fire. So can we hit fire? Seems relatively easy enough at this distance. Now let's see if we can hit fire while tracking. It is a bit of a chore to go ahead and do it. It feels like I'm going ahead and having to push my hand a decent bit. So I might bump that up and let's see if we can, you know, hit fire up here. It's, it's okay, but it could be a slightly better. Now that we have that information processed, we're gonna go ahead and look at this as well. This is our other sensitivity. Can I go ahead and hit these with relatively ease? I can, but how about up here? It's gonna be a little bit harder because it's further away and I'm just gonna take me a little bit more concentration, but it's not bad. It could be a little bit lower for me though. So with that said, let's move on to step two. Keep in mind, we are gonna be changing this. You're gonna have to be going back and forth, but step two is now your flicking senses. So you have two flicking senses, your regular flick, right? So I'm aiming at this, right? And I try to flick over there. It's pretty trash because uh, flicking is literally muscle memories. And I have none of that because this is not my sensitivity. So that's my regular flicking sense. Now you have your haymaker sense, or essentially the sense you need to be able to make a 180. Now, this is a pretty interesting sense right here. It's okay, but I do have to move my hand abnormally fast and it feels like it's taking a decent amount of effort. Now it should definitely take a decent amount of effort so you don't accidentally 180 while you're fighting, but it's still a little bit too slow for me here. So that means that my look around or my hit fire sense for flicking needs to be higher. And at the same exact time, my iron sight sense needs to be lower. Now, one thing you can go ahead and do is before you get into the nitty gritty, go to sensitivity and look at this overall sensitivity scale value. The game usually will program the ratios between the different sites pretty well. So that means you don't have to mess with anything too much if you wanna go ahead and have a decent sensitivity. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the overall sensitivity scale. So that way I still have the ratios for the other sites, but it's going to fit me a little bit better for my aiming down sights. So I'm gonna go ahead and sync that to cloud on three. Now that that's done, it's gonna be definitely make everything a little bit slower. So what I need to do instantly is turn up my hip fire sense like this. So FPP with the IDS, that's gonna be my hip fire. I'm just gonna turn that up to like 160, see how it feels. So we're gonna first go ahead and see how I hit fire feels. Reloading. Feels a little bit better. I'm definitely missing a lot more shots because I'm not used to it, but it does feel more comfortable for me. And then my 180 sense, it's okay. Still could be a little bit higher. Keep in mind, since I'm using speed acceleration, it's gonna take a little while to get used to because the muscle memory for speed acceleration takes a little bit longer to get used to, but you can still get it. And I still wish it was a little bit better but it's fine for now. Now, this overall sensitivity scale can definitely bump up your speed acceleration. So if you wanna have like a really high one, you can also use that to bump it up. Now, the vertical sensitivity scale, I will not be using, even though it's a great tool, you can essentially go ahead and eliminate recoil by just turning it up. What it does is it literally makes your vertical control super easy. So it makes recoil super easy to control because recoil just goes up. However, I won't be using this because I like to transfer from the game to game and I don't wanna get used to that in particular. I'm just gonna get used to the game's overall recoil. Now there's one more thing we did forget to try out in the base sensitivity. And essentially that is our ability to spray. So we can spray that pretty easily right there. How about something long range? 
it wasn't as good or as neat as it possibly could be. To be fair, I'm not controlling the recoil in terms of like its pattern, but I could bump it up a little bit higher to make it a little bit easier for me. So I would go into settings and do that if I felt that I needed to do it. So you want recoil to be definitely a little pull. It shouldn't be crazy easy to control, but you want it high enough so it's not a strain for you to go ahead and pull it down. So for me right here up close, it's super easy for me to go ahead and pull down. So for longer ranges, it's a little bit harder, but it's relatively good. I might bump it maybe one or two little notches. Now with that done, we're gonna go ahead into step three, and that's gonna be adjusting for snipers slash marksman rifles. And essentially what this means is, you're gonna do that process I've been talking about for every sight. So this is the iron sights. We're already done for the iron sights, right? Can I spray? Can I flick all that, right? Now you would wanna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the two times scope, right? But you do get into a problem when you go into something like a three times, because when you get into the three times, you now have weapons that can pick up both types that are kind of different. So the longbow, for example, and the R301, they both can use it three times. And I do like using the three times on the R301. It makes long range sprays way easier and it makes enemies a bit easier to see, especially on phone, sights are your friend. The longbow also uses this, which makes it a little bit hard use because I want to have a relatively high sensitivity to control that recoil on my three times but I still want it slow so if this is for you and you need to go ahead and change this go into settings go to sensitivity and then see this little thing that says link sensitivity adjustment turn that off and just for your three times if mine are both at 43 what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to bump up my shooting to like 50 and then my three times I'm gonna bump it down to 40 so once I go ahead and sync that to cloud and I have essentially two different sensitivities because I don't need a firing sensitivity for my longbow because it only shoots once at one times. And even though my look sensitivity is a little bit slower for the R301, it's still gonna be super easy for me just to drag down. Now, you don't wanna have these two completely different. They should just be relatively close. You go ahead and repeat that step for the four times scope and any other scopes that kind of work the exact same way. But those are literally the three main steps to go ahead and figure out your sensitivity. Now the step four, yes, I know I only said three steps, but I lied. It's not gonna be that easy. The step four is to go ahead and hop into a multiplayer, keep on messing with these sensitivities, and then go ahead and hop into a ranked and preferably a ranked. You can do it casuals, but the reason why I say a ranked is you wanna put yourself in a situation where there's pressure. So if you can get pressure in a casual, fine but put yourself in a situation where there's pressure. You will instantly notice where you're messing up. So if you see something like, let's say you're barely off someone like an inch or half an inch or a millimeter, go ahead and bump your sensitivity up three points. Or let's say you're using a longbow and you barely caught that person, go ahead and bump it up or lower it. And essentially the best way you're gonna be able to find your sensitivity is by actually going out and playing the game because right then and there, something about your brain is just gonna tell you, hey, I need this up now. So you're gonna instantly notice in the field what you need. You can only speculate while you're in the training range, so that's what I want you to do. This is how you find your sensitivity for speed acceleration or even fixed speed. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and let me know if you want me to make a video on how to improve your aim because there's so many little things that I don't see people do, especially in Apex, that can make your aim 10 times better. But with that said, adi, adi, os.